Hey, what's up everybody? I'm CrossCurrent. I'll be working on something new with the channel. At the end of each month, I'll be creating videos reviewing all the free games I found on Steam for that given month. I'll have a total of three categories, best of the best, best of the worst, and something in the middle. Each video will have around 10 game reviews, each lasting about a total of five minutes. During the five minutes, there'll be a very brief guide, gameplay, and then a review discussing my thoughts at the end. If you like this and you're really interested in it, please subscribe, hit that bell so you stay notified on when I make my next videos, comment with any questions and suggestions. So Halo Infinite came out in November. We all knew this game was going to be pretty darn good because it's been a long time since Halo's had another game. Now, there are some things about this game that I think could have been improved, such as having RPGs in ranked. Although both teams can get to it, it still feels a little ridiculous dying to it in the ranked field. Also having the modes randomized for ranked. So I kept on getting placed in Oddball, which by the way, I hate Oddball. It is possibly the dumbest mode in my opinion. But I got it more than 50% of the time in my ranked games to get me a rank. Now I also had glitches with the sensitivity where... When I change it, I have to exit out of the game entirely. So if you're trying to switch that within the game, you're kind of stuck. Now, I also had a glitch that was really annoying. I would queue up for rank during any match. It would put my party into the game, but not put me in the game. Now, one of the main problems with Halo Infinite in this regard is if you DC, it doesn't let you back into the game at all. So I had many ranked games where I just had one less teammate, which means we pretty much lose unless they're playing really bad. Then of course there's some kind of, there's some time when the match just ended entirely because there's an update to the game. It forced us to get a loss when we we're winning. I don't know if it did to the other team too, but it's extremely aggravating when you're trying to win the game in ranked mode and you go down because the servers die. Now that being put aside, I have noticed in Halo that ever since one of their updates, the Glitches of kicking people out of lobbies and for not letting you join into the lobbies but letting your party do it has been fixed. I haven't had a single problem with that anymore, so I took those points back, gave it back to the game. Uh, I give this game a 4.5 out of 5 because there are some things that just seem a little sloppy with this game that I brought up earlier, but the game is graphically beautiful, the weapons are nostalgic, the playstyle is aggressive and fun. And they have everything set up for a player base, especially when you're trying to add players to a party. You can add them from Discord, you can add them from Steam, but they've got everything together, and I can really say this is a good game to play. So the second best game I found this month was a game called Coverfire. Now Coverfire, it is a phone game sent to the PC, but... Here's what I really, really liked about this game. This game felt a lot like Time Crisis. If you ever played that, that's a game that's typically on an arcade where you have the two plastic guns, and you hide behind cover, you pop out, you shoot. Hide behind cover, you pop out, you use a grenade or some sort of power-up that you have. That's kind of what I got with this game. It was tried to be immersed on PC, and I actually really enjoyed it. I do say, though, one of the biggest downfalls is the fact they have the request for you to buy something, and that happens constantly, especially if you log out then back in, you'll have about 10 separate messages saying, hey, buy this, buy that, buy the other thing. All in all though, it's a really good game. I gave it a 4 out of 5 because it has so much to it, so many levels, so many characters, so many weapons, just lots of things you can do. It's single player, and there's not a lot you can do to really challenge yourself in it. It's much a very easy and very forgiving game. So if you have a kid that wants to really play a game, I suggest sending him to this because they will enjoy it a lot more than playing Fortnite or Apex Legends or any other game that is highly competitive.
Gardenia Prologue is a game that's very similar to Animal Crossing. There's not really any clear-cut way to go about the game, and there's not really an end to it either. It's just a lot of creativity and looking around gathering stuff. Now, I will say, there are some things about this game that could have been improved, such as the tutorial system. It tells you what to do, but doesn't really help you, help immerse you into getting it done. Um, there's a lot of stuff that you can see through, throughout the game, but unfortunately within about two hours, I completed everything in the game aside from buying stuff or using the slot machine. There wasn't any more land that I could visit or see, and there wasn't any more quests I could do, and the goal didn't really matter either because I already finished everything. I gave this game a 3 out of 5 because it felt like it ended a little too quickly for me to truly enjoy it. It is a prologue game, so most likely there's more in the next stage of the game. But I will say that the music in the game, as well as the sound effects, are amazing and relaxing and perfect for this style of game. So if you're looking for something just to relax to, this is a game for you. So Snake Force is a game where you're supposed to go and rescue your quote-unquote bros and you gotta take them around, shoot the enemies, and get to wherever the mission spot is, the destination. Now, this sounds extremely simple and it is, but it has a couple unique aspects to the game. You can hold shift to slow time, uh, you typically will have friendly fire on to get the achievements, and since you have people following you, you move around and it's very easy to accidentally shoot your own teammates. This makes it actually interesting, so you actually have to be careful on if you want a teammate early on, if you want too many of them, you might accidentally hurt yourself, and you just have to move around like a snake and always kind of shoot when you're turning. Now, what I didn't like about this game is the fact that there's only six missions. I finished this game in 30 minutes, so I'm a little bit aggravated because I want there to be more. They could have tossed in some unique enemies, they could have made some more unique sequences. Some of them were unique. When you go up a very tight platform, a very small platform that goes a long way, you don't have a lot of room for error. Also, there being a time limit, that's pretty cool. If they had like a bonus room, there's a lot they could do with this game that they have yet to do. And the game's been out about two weeks now, so I don't know what the holdup is. Hopefully, they fix that. Until then, I gotta give this game a 3 out of 5. It's a good game. It seems polished. It seems simple, which is good because they know exactly what they're trying to do with this game. But they need more to it. So the next game I have here is Car Detailing Simulator. I had personally thought this game would be really bad, but I ended up enjoying it. Unfortunately, though, there's just a couple things that are lacking. This is a game where you detail cars just to make them look really nice, whether that's cleaning the outside with foam and water, whether it's cleaning the inside of the car by vacuuming, picking up trash, fixing the tires, you know, everything a car would have. This game had a lot of options for that, and it just kind of felt rewarding when you got it finished because everything was extremely realistic. Now, also, this game had really good background music, and I think that's what really set the tone for it. I love the background music. It felt like I was in a shop, um, just working hard, doing what I was supposed to. The game was still chill, though, so I could just kind of relax and just get straight to it. Now, my main problem with this game is 
once I started seeing daylight and starting to do things within the garage, like making more storage shelves or trying to expand and get a better reputation and earn money, or even buy cars to myself, maybe, the game immediately said, that's a prologue, that's it, we're done. Which really killed my vibes for this. I was going to give it about a 4 out of 5, but unfortunately now I have to give it a 2.5 out of 5 because there's just nothing there. I did three cars total, and then I was done. After the first car, I got a total of nothing. So I couldn't do anything with what I just did. I just wasted about 30 minutes of my time trying to make a car look perfect for reputation instead of actually getting anything out of it. And the second car was worth it. It was a cool car. I had some fun. I did my best. I had a picture. Third one was like a pink car. I don't know why they gave me a pink car without any other options, but... I got stuck with it, I did it, it seemed fine, except that somehow, some way, it said that I didn't do something that I did do. Hopefully that's just this minor glitch, but it just kind of leaves me at the stage now where it's like, I don't know if I want to play the next version, because I don't know if they're going to get you to a certain stage where you feel like you've done a lot, but you have to pay for some DLC to work on those really cool cars, and I don't know, I just steer clear of this. I did give it a 2.5 out of 5, but I think... There's so much more they could have done, and they missed out on a really good opportunity to grab in a lot of people for this game. When it comes to Blasting Courier, I was going to give this game a very low score, about 0.5 out of 5, but... I realized later that they updated the game, and now this game feels a lot more than just off-brand Minesweeper. You actually have strategies you can use, similar to Minesweeper where you put down signs kind of saying what's bad, what's questionable, what's good. You have a way to go about the game, you have certain mechanics that happen, like if you go to water you move slower, if you go to mountains you can't traverse it. You have funny achievements that pop up, like so I was blasting. You know, stuff from like Always Sunny in Philadelphia. You can actually survive from bombs now. So I think that's really amazing. You actually have a strategy. You have a chance. Before it was just, you run into a bomb, you die. You have three chances. You have no way to do anything other than just taking a guess on a random square. Now there's a chance to live. I can vibe with it. I give this game a 2 out of 5. I like to think that there's a lot of improvements this game can have to it. Seems like a very easy downloadable game, so the update should take very little time to get updated. But until then, it has a long way to go, so just keep it in the back of your mind. Okay, so Zenture. This game feels a lot like Risk of Rain 2, and also is very similar to a game called Garda, which you'll see later in the videos. I consider this one a little bit better than Garda, but... At the same time, there's a lot of things in this game that are a little overly explained. And that's a weird problem to have, but when you pick up weapons, they have like eight different statistics, which is a lot. Um, there is a tutorial which tells you a little bit of what you're doing, what you're looking for, that you're looking for chests so you can get stuff to get better weapons or better rare materials, which the materials in the game are not described well at all. I have no idea what they are. There's like random triangles and squares that I guess help in some way. The weapons, they're, they're unique in the sense that they are different types of weapons and they're probably legitimate ones. The difficulty is extremely hard in this game and there's no way to tone that down. When you destroy the hives, you get special abilities. I never had a chance to destroy a hive because it's just ridiculously difficult and I ran into a weird glitch where... My gun would reload, and then reload again instead of firing, which caused me to die. Not so shocking. But, I do like the game, I like the old school graphics, I like the ideas they're going with, and I think this game could become something more if they really want to put the time and effort into it. So I gave this game a 2 out of 5, with the hopes that this game does get updated better than I've seen so far. <laughs> All right, so this is Wonky Wizard, everybody.
Press space three times to skip. Why can't I click anymore? Where's the mouse at? <laughs> Where did the mouse go? There it is. That's the level? Alright. Alright, so Wonky Wizard. This is a really strange game to me. Um, they don't give you a single tutorial, they don't let you know what's going on, and it's like an RPG with no levels or any actual progression. Once you finish the game, apparently that's when you finish five levels, even if they're on separate levels entirely. And once I did that, I didn't even get the ability to unlock the next level, so you're just kind of here wondering what's actually here, how do I progress, and most likely people will quit. I'd give this game a 1.5 out of 5 because the game is meant to be funny and goofy, and it did pull that off with the introduction to the game, and just the fact that there's mushroom people, later on there's big mushrooms, there's elementals, for whatever reason, and a mushroom witch, or mushroom queen. So. It's got a little consistency, and hopefully they can update it to make the game better. But until then, I gotta give this game a low score. I hope they fix it on the next video. Okay, so next we have Garda. Garda is very similar to Realm of the Mad God, especially in the sense that it has pixelated graphics. But I gave the game a pretty low score. Reason being, there is not really any tutorial. The only thing you see is that there's four signs that give you little tips, but it's pretty basic information. Like, you kill enemies to get stuff. You can upgrade things. Welcome. It's like, okay, well, that's cool, but how do I do things and what am I supposed to do? Because you don't have any, like, mining equipment or any way to gather resources, except you only get stuff when you kill enemies. So, like, you'll get attacked by random circles in the ground. Um, the ability to hit them doesn't even make a whole lot of sense. You'll swing way before and it'll count as hitting them. Later on, there will be different colored blue circles I'll pop up. So, there's fairly uniqueness to the enemies. And they'll drop different stuff. The building is a little wonky. You press E to use buildings and place them down. Um, I would like it if there was a way to put mods in this game, like how quickly the enemies spawn, or more exploration. You are meant to explore more than the game gives you any realization that it's an actual thing. But the game is fun. Once I discovered what I needed to, which took about an hour or two, the game is pretty decent. You have a lot of versatility to build, to make turrets, to power things. It's just I'm a little disappointed with how the totem is. You're supposed to upgrade the totem, but all that does is add more time between each wave that comes in. So you can explore, which is cool, but 
there's again no tools you can use i had to give this game a one out of five just because it really seemed like it was going to be good and honestly i did like it later but the way that it developed and the way that it just didn't tell you anything and the fact that the music's extremely repetitive the graphics are very minimal this game just really isn't as good as i could actually describe <laughs> Okay, so Gore Prologue. This is a game where you're supposed to survive against zombies and just kill them. Pretty straightforward. Uh, unfortunately, though, I did not like this game at all. It just seemed like everything was off the mark. When you're trying to use melee weapons or even ranged weapons, it just seems like you're using it all wrong. You swing all weird. You run and it feels like you're just bouncing around all strange. And... Just, they had a lack of variety to the game. They could have had variety of food or drinks or even just medical stuff they could use within the game. And it just really didn't have any of that. They did try to put in quest lines, which is decent. And they tried to make it so you have options similar to Star Wars The Old Republic where you choose one of the uh, options on the gold circle for yes or no or something wacky. But... It just, it really felt awful. Now, I gave this game a 1 out of 5 as a score. 1 being pretty generous. It, it should have been less with how the game ran. But they do have a unique enemy that will chase you around the entire map, unlike the other ones. So, it at least has that unique aspect. But, I would not suggest playing this game. It's just really bad. And I checked the reviews, and there's one review by another person. That gave it a 10 out of 10 after playing for 0.1 hours. Meaning that was probably one of the developers trying to make the game look good. Thank you all for watching my video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Please be sure to comment below if there's any games you'd like to see for the next monthly review video. Also, I'm going to give some first comment shoutouts. I've been a little bit behind on this because I've been sick. Also because I've got a lot going on with my life. So, shoutout goes to youtube.com slash roads. Also goes to Ideal, twitch.tv slash euphoricyolk, and twitch.tv slash calldolo. All the names are right here. Thank you guys for the 24-hour support.